Welcome back if you've been listening to The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. We are currently reading chapter 9 today. Remember to subscribe and share. It costs you nothing, but it helps my channel a lot. Thank you for tuning in today. Let's get to it. Brooklyn's finest, Uptown, and the boogie down field, the concert hall. As usual, the show outside the theater was the biggest. Females in spring leathers, patent leathers, plastic, lace, cellophane, shorts, skirts, the works. Enough gold on necks, arms, and teeth to fill Fort Knox. Players was rocking fresh Nike, Fila, Armani, Versace, Connie, Mecca, and all the flavors. Hip hop vibes hog the airwaves, and we filed in looking every person up and down and side to side, checking for authenticity. It was a car show, a hair show, a fashion show, and a host show all rolled up in one. Each male and female in the audience was as important as any other star on the stage. At showtime, the crowd went wild as the biggest names in hip hop blew up the stage. The huge speakers blasted out the hottest jams and the crowd rocked to one rhythm. The MC had everything was cool chanting, until I saw her standing money, up clapping money, with the sky blue thirty five hundred dollar Chanel skirt suit on. Take money. This money, beat pops out of nowhere with money, some weirds that money. was strictly my style and overreaching for her. Seats with the kid. And Will, all the noise of silence surrounded my all head. Kinds of shine. My body Jews shook with anger at Santiago and Mom. I also thought of midnight leaving me, when that could have easily been us in those box seats profiling. Now, what was I supposed to do while Natalie was pretending to be me? I leaned over close to Simone's ear. Do you see Natalie? Yeah, everybody sees Natalie up there. That suit she got on is banging, I painfully admitted. The security at the Chanel store is too tight or else I'd have that suit on. I told you that nigga Will is shot out on that. I only had been living in Long Island for one year. Was stuff really moving so fast that Natalie had become large? Since when did Natalie become a high roller, I asked. Girl, you don't know the half. Ever since she made that little video movie with you, she been like the little star around our way. What little movie? Don't front winner. That video with you and Bullet. And her and Slick Kid. In one part, she was sucking Slick Kid's D real nasty like. Now niggas are sweating her like Vanessa Del Rio or something. Natalie waved to us when she spotted us looking up in her direction. She was all excited. She signaled us to meet her afterwards. Simone smiled, nodded, yeah, and turned to me. Yeah, she's a little big-headed, but she aight. The last performers came on, ripping stuff down. I moved with the crowd, but I was still boiling inside. The MC came on. Too close to the show, then shouted, a special thanks to Sister Soldier for putting this show together. All proceeds are going to her children's program. Sister Soldier came out the side of the stage wearing some stuff she mixed and matched from Macy's clearance rack. People clapped for her. How does B supposed to help the community when she don't even know how to rock her stuff? I checked her arm, no Rolex, not even a Timex, nothing. No weight on her neck, nothing. Her hairdo was fat, but that don't mean nothing when you don't know how to accessorize. Besides, she could use a few sit-ups for her belly. Mm. Midnight I got some nerves. I sure wasn't asking her for nothing. What's up, girl? Natalie was smiling ear to ear as we all crammed in the concert hall li- lobby. Winner, I called you this afternoon to ask. If you wanted to come up and chill up top, but you was gone already. So, come on, girl, she said, clutching Will's arm. Roll with us to the diner. She elbowed me and whispered, it's on, Will. You want to ride with us? Nah, we got to ride. Simone jumped in. What you pushing, Winner? Natalie asked. We pushing a limo, a driver, champagne, the whole nine. All right, cool. Tell the driver to follow us. We'll meet over there and eat before we head up to the after party. Now Natalie was giving directions. There was something sexy about Will. I ain't know exactly what it was. Maybe it was the one carat diamond stud in his ear. Or maybe it was just me wanting D. 
being stressed out, and ready to get screwed. No questions asked. Could be the fact that I didn't like him being with Natalie. He made her act different, like she was better than somebody else or something. If all she had to do to get that Chanel suit was suck a little D, good. I could have gotten a whole wardrobe. Brooklyn heads jammed into Junior's restaurant. I was checking niggas I ain't seen in a long while. People had different ways of dealing with me, but nobody tried to front on me like I fell off or something because father or no father, I was wearing this Isaac Mizrahi dress like nobody could. My hair was hooked and my face was looking fresh and sensual. We all stuffed into a booth and ordered all kinds of things. Natalie talked loud as usual. It's on me, y'all. Order what you want, Natalie said loudly. We were acting like he was a Lion King surrounded by all us women. He was quiet. He paid and profiled for all niggas who only had the pleasure of having one woman's attention for the night. We was laced, all of us, a crew of girls, dipped in the finest stuff, ordering stuff we knew we weren't going to eat, and just talking, joking, and having a good time. The money in my bra was sticking me in my right titty. I headed to the bathroom to adjust it. Afterwards, I glanced in the mirror and threw on some more lipstick. I licked my finger to lay down a piece of hair that was about to get unruly. As I was coming out the bathroom, Will was standing at the payphone. The thing that ran through my mind was, what's up with him using the payphone? I had already noticed him carrying a Motorola Star, StarTac sex cellular child. They went way back. I can't even pronounce this phone. Okay. I threw my right leg out to push right on by him. Santiago's daughter, right? He asked, even though he already knew the answer. Everybody did. Yeah, what about it? I asked defensively. No, nah, no, nah, I got a lot of respect for him. I see life is still treating you good. His eyes were concentrating on mine like he was trying to hypnotize me or something. I take care of myself, I responded, letting him know there was no reason to feel sorry for me. Yeah, I could see that. What you need to do is let me take care of you. I flagged my right arm to show him no. I'm not interested. Come on, girl, just let me get your telephone number. I know you're with it. It's all in your eyes. Listen, man, I don't even get down like that. Natalie's my girl. And you would look better in that Chanel suit than she does. Just give me the word. I'll tear it right off her and put it right on yours. I thought about it for a few seconds. I'd be a liar if I said it wasn't a good offer. He smiled slyly, flashing his gold teeth, chewing real sexy like on his bubble gum. Come on, give up the number. I drop her off at home, swing around and pick you up. Then we could talk, get to know each other for the rest of the night. My nipples hardened. They started sticking out my tight dress. He saw him too, licked his lips and smiled some more. I opened my coach bag to get a pen. He pulled his pen out quicker. He scribbled on a book of matches. I recited 555. When Natalie appeared in the doorway, she looked at him. Why are you using the payphone? She asked just to have something to say. When he didn't answer, she looked at me with my bag open, then looked at him with his pen in hand and said, you little sneaky bee. You effing low down sneaky bee. Wait a minute, Natalie, he asked me, he asked you what? What did you ask her? She spun around to Will. Baby ain't ask her nothing, she needed a pen. I had to make a call. I ain't want to get traced in my cell phone, so I used a pay phone. I was giving her the pen and that's it. See, I'm here. Why are you suspicious all the time? He pulled her and gave her a big beer hug to calm her down. As she buried her face in his white chest, he looked over her shoulder at me for the last four digits. I silently mobbed, four, seven, two, eight. Still embracing her, he mobbed, I call you. Nigga right here. Back around the table, none of the girls at the table knew what happened. But everybody could feel that things had tensed up. Our food had arrived and Natalie wasn't saying or eating nothing. She was all back on Will's D, but looking at me like I was a murderer or something. Finally, Natalie blurted to me saying, nice dress. Tashi said, yeah, that ish is banging. Did someone pick that up for you? Natalie added in a sarcastic voice. Simone cut her eyes at Natalie, then looked at me for a sign of what was going on. My teeth were locked with anger. Nah. 
She bought that today. Simone said, I wish I would have picked it up for her because half that dough she spent on it will be in my pocket right now. Everybody except me and Natalie laughed at Simone's unended one-woman comedy show. Yeah, your little suit is nice too, I responded in a snotty voice. It's just my style. Yeah, I picked it up for $50 at an auction the FBI did at your house in Long Island along with some other fancy-ish. I lunged across the table for Natalie's neck. Zakia jumped in between trying to separate us with her arms as Simone held me back. Tashi held Natalie as Zakia told Will to step back. You sneaky bee. Natalie yelled, you always thought it was all about you. Nobody could have nothing around you. Here I am being a friend and you stabbing me in my effing back. Here the whole time, the whole block talking about your crazy a crackhead, bald head mama and your broke homeless ass. I'm taking up for you and you trying to cut my throat. Don't think you ain't going to take no ass over for that. Later for Will, this is about me and you. You ain't nothing but a low class hoe, Natalie. You been biting my style forever because you don't have no style. And for the last time, your man came to me. And if your ish was all that, he won't be sniffing up and around my ass, so get it together. Ooh, I'm going to F you up, winner. Don't let me catch your ass in the hallway or anywhere. I'm going to F you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all coming? I asked, getting up from the table to leave. All of them was looking back and forth to see what each one was going to do. Simone hopped in the limo with me. The other stayed with Natalie. If I wasn't pregnant, Simone said, I'd have your back, but I got to look out for this one here, pointing to her belly. Me and Simone stayed up drinking the rest of the night. I stumbled into Aunt B's at 5 a.m. and fell asleep in my clothes. Wait, what? Okay. By 5 p.m. Sunday evening, I woke up with a headache, peeled off my clothes, and stepped into the hot shower. My mind flashed back on the past 24 hours and my tears mixed with the shower water. The idea of my personal business being yelled out at Junior's restaurant had me shaking still. Will called at six. So what's up? You ready? I'm coming to get you. Stop playing. You ain't even checked for me last night when your girl was going off on me. Don't pay that no mind. If I would have stepped in, she would have only got more dramatic. The way I handled it was to let her blow off some steam until she tired out. Oh, really? I said nonchalant like. Come down at 7. I'll pick you up. I'll be driving my green Q45, not the Rover. All right, meet me in the back of the B building. I knew I was living dangerously, but I wasn't worried. What Natalie didn't understand was that I needed Will for business purposes. She was way too dumb to relate to the ideas and business plans I had put together. She had crossed the line when she tried to play me out in public. I was about to build an empire, so... I didn't have to be concerned with low life like Natalie and her off-the-wall comments. Outside the car was dark green and crisp. Mint green, custom upholstered leather seats with dark green piping. The rugs were mint green too. I slid off my shoes as I entered the car, afraid to even a limp ball in his interior. Pretty feet, Winter. So, how about the bottoms? What? The bottom of your feet? Are they soft like silk or hard and crusty like sandpaper? Don't compare me to the second-rate women you're used to. Second-rate, huh? He repeats quietly without sounding the least bit insulted. Yeah, the ones with ashy ankles and elbows. The ones with the hard feet and chip nail polish. That's what you're used to. I laugh. And the ripped panties and dingy bras with the wire popping out and the stinking hairy underarms. And I got you, Winter. I get the point. Good. Don't insult me and I won't insult you. Where are we going? I want to check on the new Bruce Willis flick. Oh, I responded uninterested. Why? What do you want to do? I want to talk. Dang, why women always want to talk? I just met you. What do we have to talk about? Something that's important to me. Business. He laughed. <laughs> business? What kind of business? You know what kind of business. Oh, he said, then pause. You don't want to talk about that. That's a man's game. Business is a rough sport like football or worse. You don't want to get into that. I've been around it my whole life. 
I know what I'm dealing with. Right now, I'm in a tight spot. I need to make some dough, fast money. I know you can relate to that. You know I know you ain't ready for this conversation because you don't even know me and you talking to me about some stuff you can't trust nobody in. I already thought about that. But the deal is I got to start somewhere. Panicking about who to trust and who not to trust ain't getting me nowhere. I'm ready to take a gamble. The way I see it, whoever gambles with me gambles too. We both have something to lose. Yeah, but I ain't the person. This ain't the angle I come in on. I asked for your number because I think you're a classy chick. I wanted to spend time with you, shoot the crap, catch a movie. Now you're trying to muscle in on something else. I can't do business with you, winner. I play hardball, the major leagues. All right, look at it from another angle. Think of me as an investor. I give you my money to invest in your trade. You give me the return on my money. What if you give me your money and I don't give you back nothing? See, this business is like a chess game. You got to think of every possible move any and every player in the game can make. To every move, you got to have a smart reaction. You have no crew holding you down. Then where's the threat? What's going to prevent any nigga from jerking you, robbing you, killing you? Santiago's gone. His whole crew is gone. It was good while it lasted. That's why I'm going to pile up my dough. And get out before it's too late. My face dropped. Will saw my sadness. All right. How much are you working with? I got $2,500, I said proudly. Will laughed and laughed. What's so effing funny? I don't even deal in those small sums of money. The way you were talking, I was thinking you was about to negotiate a major deal. You talking about you working a corner, hand to hand, competing with the other sellers who've been out there and got a flow going with their customers. You talking about sparking a beef of tor- over turf just based on them niggas being down with the new and you being a reminder of the old? Well, then you put me on. I'll be down with your crew. Train me and all that good stuff. Put me on. Will look like he was thinking about it and he pulled into the drive-in. You know, there's a lot of ways to make money winner. Not only one way. Yeah, like what? Will smile. I shot him an F you ain't no two dollar hole look. I ain't tricking. Working no dirty alleys and stuff like that. I would never put Santiago's daughter on the whole stroll. You too good for that kind of work. So what you offering? Just stick with me, winner. You want some popcorn? No, I said frustrated. Will came back with everything size large. Large drink, large popcorn, large nachos. As I sat there watching him crunching on his popcorn, I wondered. What is real really into? Who is he? Did he have any value or purpose to me or was I just wasting my time? He obviously didn't want to do business with me. He must have only wanted to cooch. I tried to take a good look at him again, but it was too dark. I could only get a glimpse when a blue or yellow red light flickered off the screen into the car. He looked all right as far as I can remember. But he didn't give me that uncontrollable feeling that I felt when I was in the car with Midnight. He had all the right stuff, and I give him some ish to get it from him. But only if I was sure I was going to get exactly what I wanted. I seen plenty of Negro who would flash their jewels, cars, and gear, one through the cat, and leave the girl with the rug burns on her back and nothing else. I need a cash training, a solid team, a real man to look out for me in every way. So I started to mess with his head. Let me ask you something, Will. You're supposed to be a businessman, right? No doubt. He said confidently. You watch how your money moves. Look out for people trying to piece the stash. Don't want to make moves with no small timer, small money. Yeah, what you getting at, he asked, slightly aggravated. So why does the man who works so hard for the dough drop three G's on the be like Natalie for a Chanel suit? That suit really got you heated, huh, he joked. No, seriously. It's no secret that Natalie mess around with anybody. You're supposed to be a man who watches the company he keeps and look who you end up in the box seats with. Will was aggravated, look. You want to get raw with me? I'm going to get raw with you. I'm going to talk to you like you one of my boys now. 
Natalie sucks my D like no other hoe ever sucked my D. Yeah, but you could have got your D sucked on 42nd Street. Nah, not like that. There's an art to sucking D. Natalie got that locked down. She gets the whole D in the mouth and she finds room for my nuts. When I bust in her mouth, she swallows like it's pancake syrup. Oh, I'm finna throw it away. Hell, she earned that $3,000 suit. She sure did, cause mm -mm. He laughed. One of my boys from Fort Greene was just saying Natalie's effing around with this other kid he knows around your way. I told my boy, if she's sucking his D like he's sucking mine, I know why he risking his life effing one of my hoes. But as long as she's sucking my D like she does, she can get whatever she wants. So, what did you want my number for? Just because a kick chick can suck your D good doesn't mean she could be your girl. I figured that ish out. Oh, so you saying that? I'm saying that you Santiago's daughter, you're beautiful, young, top of the line. Nigga don't have to teach you how to act. You're naturally classy. Now, nah, that's different. Oh, so you're trying to make yourself look good by making Winter Santiago your girl. But then you're going to let Natalie suck your dick on the side while you blessing her with clothes and cash. Um, first off, I ain't say nothing about giving her cash. I give her things she wants. And if you're asking me to cut her off, you must be saying you're going to do better than what she do. So I wouldn't have no reason to F with her again. Will rubbed his balls with his left hand until his thick erect D was sticking out of his pants. Oh, now you actually got the nerve to ask me to suck your D? Will started laughing. Listen, girl, you just don't know. Some niggas smoke weed. Some niggas hooked on cane. Some on the P. My pleasure is having my joint done right. If it ain't, if I ain't got a girl, the minute I want her, I make one of them crackhead niggas suck my joint. What? Man, them niggas is so turned out on that crack. They'll get on their knees and suck my D. Just like a bee for a hit of the pipe. He laughed. Men got stronger jaws. It feels better. Okay. The movie screen turned black. Will's lips were moving. He was talking, but I couldn't hear no more sound. That was it. If there was a feeling in my body for Will, it was dead. I told myself I could calm myself down. Maybe I could still have Will as a possible business partner somewhere down the road. The bottom line was I was sitting next to a man who thought it was okay to let another man suck his D. Will figured that only the crackhead was a homosexual. Um, Will saw himself as all man, the powerful dealer. Just to keep it real with y'all, I can't take no man seriously who I got to guess about sexually. I can't be seduced or excited by questionable masculinity. I need to know that my man is rugged and rough to the bone. I would never have to worry about midnight saying or doing this. If a crackhead even suggested oral sex as a trade off for cash, midnight would have put a bullet in his head. What Santiago might have done in that situation is unmentionable. I bobbed and weaved like a boxer for the rest of our date. I knew I had to play my cards carefully not to burn a potential bridge. At the same time, I refused to end the night with my face buried in Will's lap. Tomorrow, I will consult with my father about my financial options. My anger towards him was slowly wearing down. I fell back into a corner. The truth of the matter was I needed some good advice from Daddy, a man who always loved me. The pain of it all was trying to talk through a thick glass or having to speak through a small vent or having to talk some dirty old phone surveillance by the police. There would be no kind of privacy. I would have to pick over each and every word. I hated the idea of not being able to touch my father, having to watch him move and calculate his steps because his hands and feet were chained together. What do I say to him about my mother? What had daddy already heard? Who would he blame? Wasn't my mother's condition his fault? Wasn't the incident with Dose that pushed Mama over the edge in the first place? How much did Dose cost Daddy? Did she have money hidden that belonged to Santiago? Tomorrow I will get answers from him to all of my questions. I crawled into bed and noticed my cousin Bianca was back and fast asleep in our small room.
I saw you get out of his car. When I catch you, B, your A is grass. That was my 5 a.m. wake up call from Natalie. She couldn't rattle me though. She's so petite that I didn't even think of her as a fighter. I thought to myself, shoot, definitely had to change a whole lot because she was a time she wouldn't even dream of threatening me, much less following through and putting her hands on me. She was a gossip operator in our neighborhood. Therefore, she knew my situation. She knew my family wasn't tight like it used to be. The only worry I had now was when and how Natalie would attack. Would she jump out of a dark corner with a razor on the steps? Would the light is always broken? Or would she pay one of the local crackheads to do some ill-ish to me? I had to stay alert. At 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 o'clock, the phone rang. Each time, person calling, hanging up. I knew it was Natalie. By 8 a.m., my aunt was screaming about the crank phone calls. She paced the hallways, talking about, there are three grown women living in this apartment, and whatever kind of ish happens, it means somebody sleeping with somebody else's man. I didn't answer. Bianca looked at me, rolled her eyes, as if to agree that her mother was bugging, and she went back to sleep. Out of frustration, I got up and headed for the shower. The steam surrounded my naked body and heated water drops slid down my breast. It's time to leave here, I told myself. So I asked myself, and go where? I came up with no response, but I knew I needed to leave fast. Where's midnight now? I wondered. I imagined him in a villa in Spain sipping a tequila sunrise. Tequila was a Spanish or Mexican drink. Oh, wait, what's the difference? Or maybe Midnight was disguised somewhere in a shack in Alabama. Nah, he was just moved for that. He was sitting in the back room of an elegant club in Chicago, one that he owned. He dressed up every night, blending in with the darkness, but still wearing sunglasses. He raked in mad dough, but ran the real operation out the back room of the club. He was saving up enough dough to come and rescue me from this bull crap. He'd take me to the nightclub, bring me on stage where the spotlight would fall on me. I'd be wearing a silver designer dress that was so top notch, it wouldn't even have a name. A dress especially prepared for me. No other dress like it in the world. I have on silver shoes imported from Italy and handcrafted stockings with designer gator, garter belts. Midnight would say, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my wife, the new hostess of my club, Winter storm. The crowd would cheer, and I would graciously accept my new role as a top hostess madame in town. In the shower, I made myself laugh and laugh and laugh. Don't you hear me knocking? My aunt's voice sliced through the sound of the showering water. Yeah, B. Somebody's here to see you. I grabbed back the shower curtain saying, oh, Aunt B, I forgot to tell you, I mean, I forgot to ask you, if Natalie comes to cause, just tell her that I left already. Why, she asked suspiciously. I thought that was your girl. Nah, she is. I just don't feel like being bothered with her today because I got a lot on my mind. Oh, Aunt B said, you must be thinking about that stretch limo you was riding around in Saturday night and maybe you thinking about Natalie's man. What's his name again? Bianca, my aunt yelled to her daughter. What's Natalie's boyfriend's name? Bianca didn't answer. I stood there speechless and naked and getting cold as the air blew in and steam moved out of the open door. Ma stepped out the doorway. I ain't that damn old. I know what goes around here, especially in my own house. Aunt B, I said, who's at the door? She stuck her head back and said, you see, get dressed. Patting myself dry. I dashed into the bedroom. Bianca was up and out her bed. I thought, dang, where'd she go that quick? I went in my suitcase, pulled out my jeans and a shirt. As I reached for the bra, I had laid on top of the suitcase under the folded dress I took off last night. I immediately saw that my safety pin was not there. I ran my hand along the lining of the bra. The pins were gone. My $2,500 was gone. A sense of emergency overcame my body. Don't panic, I mumbled to myself. I unfolded my dress, shook it out to see if my money had somehow gotten tangled up in there. Nothing. 
I threw open the top of my suitcase and started running my hand along the side pockets. Searching for the cash. I looked in places I knew I had never and would never put the money. Sweat broke out on my forehead, mixing with water beads from the shower. I be stuck her head in the bedroom door, shook her head with disapproval and said, what a mess. Please don't keep company waiting. She cleared her throat. Are you looking for something? I opened my mouth to speak, then immediately closed it. Nah. She walked away. I got it. I caught it. She had been in my things. My aunt had stolen my money. She thought it was even Steven because she didn't have no money and figured I got more money where this comes from. Because I must be holding out on her. This bee took my money. My life saving. I screamed out loud. No words, just sounds. I stood but naked in anguish. Mine came back in the bedroom door with her hands on her hips, followed by an older white woman. She was peering into the bedroom at me like she was trying to see as much as she could, as quickly as she could. Mine turned around and said, good luck with her. She's a mess. She don't want to listen to nobody. She always wanted her way and she's a nonstop liar. Winter, this is Mrs. Griswoldy. She's from BCW. Nice to meet you, Winter. We've been looking all over for you. I'm just glad I just got the call about your new address this morning. Come get dressed. Let's go. I'm not going anywhere with you. Miss Griswoldy leaned toward me. I'm sorry. This is the way you feel, Winter. In fact, I'm sorry for everything that's happened to you up until this point. From now on, in the next 330 days, you are officially a ward of the state. We are your legal guardians. Please come along with us. The marshal will escort us. I glanced down the hall and saw a man in a uniform. Wait, hold on. I'm B, can I talk to you for a second? I B looked at Miss Griswoldy as though she all of a sudden needed permission from her to have a conversation with her own in her own apartment. Miss Griswoldy looked at her and said, You have five minutes. We're on a tight schedule. You're not the only pickup we have to do this afternoon. Please pack all the belongings that you plan to bring along with you. I grabbed Aunt B's hand and said, excuse me a minute, and closed the door. Come on, Aunt B, we family. Did you actually turn me in? Did you call the effing authorities on me? Is it that bad? Dang, I would have gave you some money. Tears of anger filled my eyes. Don't be stupid, winner. Think I'm going to call some authorities into my crib? That nosy lady been snooping all around my house. You think I want some more police and heat up in my place? You just a dumbass winner. You don't run nothing around here. You better check yourself. That stupid bee Natalie probably caught the authorities on you. Now this white lady know all our business. Child, ain't that what the older black people say? She know. I got too many people living in this apartment to be on Section 8. She know Alvin's locked up. She know your mother's on drugs. She's looking at my arms, checking for tracks. She's staring in my face like I'm supposed to confess something. I just want her to get the F out of here before she start writing me up. Go pack your stuff up and go. You to be so dang on smart, you sure are stupid and I don't need no trouble. What about my money though? That's all the money I have to my name. Mom looked me dead in my eyes and said, what money? She st struck her two hands in her pants pocket, pulling out the pockets inside out. There was nothing in those pockets but lit. I don't have any money. As far as I know, you ain't have any money either. I be gave me the even sarcastic I told you so grin. My mind snapped. All I know is I had my two hands around her neck choking her. She was gagging for air. I wasn't going for her no money in my pockets act. I ripped off her shirt. She fought back. But she couldn't fight me. Well, she could, but she couldn't win. I snatched her bra off. The money wasn't hidden in there. Miss Griswoldy and the marshal entered the room. The marshal restrained me. Miss Griswoldy picked up Aunt B off the floor and tried to help her reassemble herself. Wow. My aunt stepped back from Miss Griswoldy's assistance. With only her pants left on her body and busted lips, she snatched a big piece of her shirt off the floor to cover up her boobs. You see, she said to Miss Griswoldy, breathing in and out real hard, winter is violent and spoiled. You need to lock her up. She can't be trusted. All I can say is I opened my place to her and she turned on me. She'll turn on you too. I understood how she was trying to set me up. I just mumbled, you junkie bee. Packed up my stuff to go. Mm -mm. This concludes chapter nine. I'm congested, y'all. I hope y'all got through this without being too grossed out. I'm doing what I can.
okay i wanted to get y'all chapter nine what y'all think about it leave a comment below remember to subscribe and share it really does help my channel until next time be happy healthy and whole